Yes, I am using this title once again, not implying that people are stupid or anything. I just have happened to notice that opinion about this phone, the iPhone 13 mini, falls into one of two categories. The first being, this is the greatest phone I have ever used and I'm going to make love to it. <laughs> the second category is, this is the worst phone to have ever existed. It is literally dog water. Okay, so I think you get the picture, but yeah, I'm confident in saying that from what I've read on YouTube, the comments, Twitter, all of this, um, people have this device wrong, and it's definitely not for everyone, but we're here today to talk about who it's for, what makes it great, and what makes it not so great. First up, like I just said, everybody has different needs with regard to an iPhone or a phone in general. You know, iPhones aren't for everybody, but even iPhones, or like specific iPhones, aren't for every iPhone user. Some people need more battery life, some people need a bigger screen, some people need a smaller screen, and I'll dive into that when I talk about who this phone is for and who it's not, but we need to be aware that just because this phone may address your needs just like mwah, chef's kiss, or if it does the exact opposite, it doesn't make this phone, I guess, irrelevant or overly relevant. But yeah, with all that said, let's begin here by talking about why Compact is capable. Why should you buy a 5.4 inch iPhone in 2021 and beyond, whether they still make this size of phone in the future? Um, One-handed usage is the first thing that comes to mind. This thing is so great for pulling out the dialer and typing in a number, going into Safari or iMessage and just sort of just one-handing the keyboard. This is the only new iPhone where you can properly do this. You know, the SE maybe, the, you know, of course, previous gen iPhones like the iPhone 6, and not even actually, those phones were pretty big, even with the bezels. I mean, sure, they had a 4.7 inch display, but roughly the same footprint or a little bit smaller of a footprint compared to the 11 and the 12 and all that. So. Yeah, yeah, this is a proper one hand usable iPhone, if you will. Um, so if you're somebody that wants that and you're like busy and you're always carrying something with one hand or you just like using your phone with one hand and only one hand, this is the phone you're gonna wanna get. Um, also too, if you have small hands, if you are like, you know, just a smaller person and you have smaller pockets, this is great for that as well. It's gonna fit more comfortably in your clothing and it's also gonna fit more comfortably in the palm of your hand. But of course, a lack of screen real estate does come at a cost. Um, for example, if you are hard of sight, is that even a thing to say? If you, if you can't see well, if you're like my parents, if you're over the age of 50, sorry, it's the truth, I'm, I can't wait for that. Um, I'm told about it all the time. I, well, my parents are just like, I still can't see it, and I'm like, ow! But anyway, um, let's get back to the video here. Um, you can display bigger text on a bigger display a little bit more easily. My dad has a 10s Max, I know my grandma has an 8 Plus, uh, my grandpa has a 7 Plus. Like, you wanna have a bigger display so you can just, again, display your text at a bigger size so you can read it better. Um, so there might be scaling issues with the iPhone 13 mini simply because it's just smaller and you're gonna be able to see less if the text is bigger. So. Um, also too, you know, in terms of uh, media consumption, for example, like if you wanna go on YouTube, it's probably better to have a bigger display for that. I mean, let's open up a video here. Hopefully, uh, I'll just open up one of mine because I don't wanna do um, copyright infringement here. But yeah, it's much better to watch a video here. You know, you have probably bigger, better speakers, more screen real estate to show the entire video. I think that the notch with this phone is also not cutting into widescreen video as much. Like as you can see here, this is 18 by nine. It's not cutting in, you can't see it, but with the iPhone 13 mini, which I can demo here, um, I can pull up the same video and I think there's gonna be a bit of an issue. So let's pull up my channel. Let's pull up my last video um, and then yeah, let's go into landscape. And as you can see here, we have a little bit of the notch cutting over the screen. Not the biggest deal, um, but still, um, it's kind of annoying. And also too, just holding this or watching content on this is less pleasant because a smaller screen is not ideal for this. You can do it, but you know, I wouldn't recommend it. But of course, the small display must be like worth more to you than like, you know, content consumption. Because if it isn't, then you're gonna wanna go with something at least 6.1 inches big. You know what I mean? Just so you have a better, content consumption experience. Also too, with a bigger iPhone, you have a bigger keyboard, which I really enjoy. Um, after using the 13 Pro Max, after using the 12 Pro for about a year, I really appreciate having all of this area to type on keys. You can be more accurate if you know, you're giving this to an older person. Maybe they need to have bigger buttons to push. Um, so there's benefits that come with the keyboard. So even though you can do one-handed typing with the 13 mini, if I can even pull up the keyboard here, 
um, it's still a lot smaller. And when it comes to like two-handed typing, you do have to be a little bit more precise and there is more room to screw up. So yeah, having a bigger screen does have its benefits. Also too, if you want the Pro Max size display, which you know only comes in a Pro variant, you do get a brighter display in this case and also a higher refresh rate. So you know um, that doesn't apply to the 6.1 inch iPhone 13, which has the same display qualities as the 13. So you're less, um, in that case, missing out on you know like extra features, just more so screen real estate. But if you are foregoing a pro model, again, you are missing out on promotion. You are missing out on brighter, just a brighter display. So, you know, again, if that isn't worth the smaller display, if it sort of outweighs that, then go with the pro display or at least the 6.1 inch display. And vice versa, if the smaller display is worth more than, you know, promotion, brighter display, and just more screen real estate, that again, might be worth it to you. It's sort of about it's, it's sort of about just listing trade offs and seeing like what's worth more to you, you know, spec wise. But in, in 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 essence, the specs do really you know affect your everyday usage here drastically. Uh, in the case of the 13 Mini and of course the 13 Pro Max. Next up, let's talk about why the Mini is mighty. Why is this a you know arguably overpowered phone for its form factor? First up, we have the A15 chip in here, which is a little bit better than the A14, but still a very powerful processor uh, on the inside, just like with the 12 Mini and the A14 last year. This is a very powerful, if not the most powerful compact phone on the market right now and will be for the next couple of years, I think, because most people aren't putting, you know, really like S-class level chips into a phone of this size as of right now, more so budget um, oriented chips, maybe like the 785 or 758G or whatever is in like the OnePlus Nord and the Moto Razr now and stuff like that. This is a world-class chip in a small phone. So if you need to game, if you need to video edit on this size of a display, I don't know why you would, but if you want to, you could, um, because the power on the inside here, it's, it's souped up. Um, also too, the camera setup in here is phenomenal. It's the same as the iPhone 13s. You get great background blur, you get great low light, you get great 4K video with you know depth of field and all that cinematic mode. An amazing camera in such a small size. But then on the flip side, you know, what's not so mighty about this form factor? Where do the specs lack? And although the battery life is better this year, much, much better, like usable, it's still, you know, there's still a small battery in here. Um, you know, you're not gonna get like 10 hours of screen on time like you would with the 13 Pro Max. So you kinda have to know, you know, what you're about and how you're using your phone. So battery life is still not ideal, at least for me. But again, I can't, you know, assume everybody's usage case here. But yeah, other than the lesser battery life, this is an iPhone 13 through and through from the craftsmanship, um, from the colors, from the camera quality and the display quality. It's just as bright as the iPhone 13, just smaller. And that begs the question, who is this for? Who benefits from this phone? And I'll first up start by talking about my YouTuber experience or perspective, which is less important to the general consumer perspective, which is why I'm gonna just get mine out of the way first. Um, this phone is not for me. Um, although it might be for me on days that I wanna go to the gym where I wanna pack light, but again, um, not everybody has a second phone to put a SIM in, so my situation really isn't representative, unless you are a big tech enthusiast. You know, if you wanna have two iPhones, the more power to you. If you have a secondary line, maybe get the mini, so it's different. Um, but yeah, um, I'm not gonna be using this unless I need to be on the go. I don't need a long battery life or screen on time, and I just want something that's convenient. I just want a phone in my pocket. Maybe I wanna use my phone less. Then I would go with this. Um, but in the meantime, I am going to stick with the iPhone 13 Pro Max or the iPhone 13 Pro if I get sick of this form factor because this is a little bit much to deal with. But the battery life here is just so, just mwah. 10 hours, I was on FaceTime one day for three hours and that was like 30% of the battery consumption, but that's like, FaceTime is really like energy consuming. So this phone is a monster, it's a powerhouse. I use the camera setup, I shoot, you know, YouTube clips with it, you know, um, advertisement clips, I do work with this phone. So if I need to have a powerhouse in my pocket, it's this and I'm quite often making or taking advantage of everything that comes with this phone. But of course, that's my YouTuber perspective. It's not representative of what most of you are doing or experiencing or should you know, be recommended. Like, I'm not recommending that you own two phones. It makes sense for me because I make a living talking about this stuff, but for you, it's just an appreciating asset. Um, so let's talk about who this phone is for. Again, if you have smaller hands, if you want to one hand your phone, or if you just don't wanna spend an extra $100 on a regular size display, this is great, you get all the modern amenities, you get all of the great camera features, 
a beautiful display, an amazing camera setup for $699 or a little more if you buy unlocked or like non-carrier locked or whatever. Um, but you know, again, you are sacrificing screen real estate and battery life. But I will say this, and this is a bit of an anecdote, but I think it's perfect you know, with regard to who this is for. I was talking to a student, and maybe he's watching this, hello. Um, he was like, I need a new phone, my iPhone 11 is too big, what do you recommend? And I went, okay, show me your battery consumption, like show me your screen on time. And he went to settings, if I can find it, he went to the battery you know, page or whatever, and then he looked at the you know, last 10 days, and you know, I've been using this phone less, I've been, I've been testing it less, um, but his screen on time was about four hours and 45 minutes on average a day, which is perfect because this phone, if you watch Mr. Who's the Boss's you know, battery test, gets about six hours of screen on time. Not bad you know, if you're somebody who's not on their phone a lot. So he would have you know, about an hour and a half left to spare at the end of the day, which is great. And if he wants something smaller, this is perfect. But if you're somebody that needs to be on the phone, all the time, you're using your camera or your, or your camera app or your phone to record videos and photos like I am, um, you need extra battery life for that. Or if you're just on your phone all the time, let's check out the screen on time on my uh, Pro Max model here. It's gonna be really embarrassing, but I do, I do do a lot of work on my phone. I do you know make a lot of phone calls and do a lot of you know creative work on here, or, or at least I use this in my creative work. So if I go to battery life here, or battery you know analysis, look at this, 10 hours and three minutes, okay? This is four hours over you know, what the iPhone 13 mini can last, which is why when I pick this up again after you know using the iPhone 13, which gets about eight hours of battery life, so pretty comfortable for me, this just wasn't comfortable. But again, if you're somebody that like doesn't need to be on their phone all the time, or, you, or maybe you're a healthier person than I am, maybe you're less distracted, or maybe you just use other devices for your work, this is fine. This is totally fine, especially with the MagSafe power pack, which I don't have on me right now, but if you need extra power, all you have to do is just smack that on. Super convenient, especially the Apple one, because it really conforms to the sides of the phone. So um, yeah, um, let me just reference my notes to see if I have anything else to say. Once again, this video is brought to you by Vosiboked and their amazing three-in-one wireless charger for all of your Apple devices here, at least mobile ones. And when I tell you I ripped this out of the box, I did because my dresser used to be a cabled mess, but not anymore because this thing consolidates three chargers into one and is powered by one cable here and works so, so nice with my MagSafe uh, iPhones like the 13 mini right here and the 13, which I'm holding in my hand. But if you don't have a MagSafe iPhone, they have you covered as well because they give you a mag ring in the box to attach to preferably your phone case, but I attach it to the phone in this case um, so we can charge the iPhone 8 just like we would any other MagSafe iPhone here. And if you're thinking about ordering, if you're one of the first 100 people to use my link in the video description, you can get 40% off your purchase using code VALUE40 at checkout. But yeah, this thing is really, really nice. It improves my daily charging life um, a thousand times compared to what I had before, which was awful. So I will leave a link in the video description if you're interested. Okay, apparently not. That about um, wraps up this video here. I hope it was casual. I hope it was fun. Uh, again, this is not, you know, the best phone and it's not the worst phone. It's just an ideal phone for somebody who wants a smaller form factor, who doesn't wanna spend a lot of money, who has smaller hands and wants a phone that's comfortable in their hands and doesn't use their phone a lot. You know, this is a perfect iPhone for that. And maybe if you're somebody who's trying to cut down on screen on time, because this lasts, you know, less, maybe, maybe you'll, you'll be inclined to use it less because you're gonna be worried about battery like that. It could be a good thing. But yeah, it's not for everyone, but it's definitely for some people. I hope I've made that clear as to who that is. Um, but yeah, um, I hope this was fun. Leave a like if you want to. Comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. And uh, other than that, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.